Hey everyone, so this is a refresher tutorial on when we would want to use selection, so select by attributes or select by location um, in ArcGIS versus when we need to use geoprocessing. Um, and geoprocessing, what I mean by that are things like buffers and clips, intersects and erases. So I have a couple of questions posed on a couple of different slides. The first set of questions is, um, and we're gonna be using the dead bird data. So everybody at UMass should remember the dead bird lab from week three. Um, so I've got my dead bird location and my roads on here. So the first question is how many roads are within two kilometers of the dead bird and what are the names of those roads? So let us work on that first. So here's my dead bird and here's all my roads around it. Um, and to start with, I actually want to create, not a clip, um, but a buffer of that two kilometers around my dead bird. And this is mainly just for visualization so that we can see, you know, like how big two kilometers is and what that actually looks like. I'm going to set this to no dissolve, which is the default. doesn't matter because it's only a single point. So whether that one polygon there's no, there's no multiple polygons to dissolve together. So one is fine. Um, and then I am also, because I do not love GIS's default symbology, um, I'm gonna set this to a black outline rather than that sort of see-through blue thing. And I'll just move it onto the top of everything else. If we get there, there we go. Um, so that you can just visualize how big two kilometers is. So if we wanted to select all of the roads that are within two kilometers of a dead bird, um, within two kilometers seems like a location to me, but it's always possible that there's an attribute of that. So never a bad idea to start out by looking at the attribute table of our roads. And in here we can see a bunch of stuff, <laughs> um, including names of the road here and street, um, and then also uh, this FE name. And we have a bunch of other columns, which to me don't mean anything, maybe a zip code of wherever that road is. Um, but uh, presumably these are meaningful to the Department of Transportation, right? And if we went back to the MassGIS website where these data came from originally, we could probably find metadata to tell us what each of these fields means. Um, uh, nonetheless, though, we do not see a field that says within two kilometers of a dead bird. So let's progress, but with doing that as a selection by location. I'm going to go up to my select by location. The feature that I want to select is roads. So there's my input features as roads. Um, I can do this a couple of different ways, but let's start within the distance uh, of my dead bird point, and I want that to be two kilometers. Uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, on that. Um, so I have selected 416 features here. Now I did that without the buffer, but I could also do it using the buffer since I you know, already went to the trouble of creating it. Um, let's actually clear that selection first. I could, instead of selecting within a distance of, I could also select the roads that intersect my dead bird buffer one, and I don't need any search distance. And hopefully I get the same answer of 416 features. So that answers the question of how many. Um, the next question was, what are they called? So here's everything, but I'm gonna go over and look at the selected ones. Remember that there was a thing called street in here. So street presumably gives me a list of the names of all of the different 416 streets. I can export this as a text file or a CSV file or something like that and open it in Excel or open it in um, Google Sheets, something like that, sort of through my different streets. 
But I'm also noticing in here that there's at least one street that has multiple segments um, named the same street within my dead bird buffer. So that suggests to me that there might be some duplicates in this column, in this field. So how do I get rid of duplicates? Um, the summarize tool helps us with that. Uh, and this, you know, I can, I, it's gonna force me to put something into the statistics field, but essentially the default in summary statistics or in summarize is to put together like with like um, for the, the field that we have chosen. So in this case, our street, um, and then tell us what statistic you want in this case. And I'm just gonna say, tell me the first street name that you get, you know, it's, you could, you could put in like the mean, but that's not, actually, I guess it won't let you because it sees that this is a text field. So you can't average together text. So, um, and count is another count. It does by default actually. Uh, so let's just do count. We'll get it twice. This is going to then output this table, which I can open up. Um, and this then tells me, so it, by default already gives me the frequency. I've told it to give me the frequency again, <laughs> which is count. Um, but this will sum together, or not sum, but combine together all of the streets that have the same names. So now you notice I have 158 total rows in this table. Um, and that's because First Street occurred twice. There were two segments of First Street and Abbott Road occurred four times. There were four segments of Abbott Road. And so this is putting all of these together. And again, I can just like export this data if I wanted to put it in Excel or put it in Google Sheets or something like that. So there's my list of 158 unique street names that are within two kilometers of my dead bird. All right, so let me go back to my, that answered both of these questions, right? So both of these could be handled. So how many and what are they? The identity of them can be handled easily with just selections. We didn't actually need to do that buffer because we could do selection within a distance of, um, we can, it's just an extra step. So here's another question. This question is, what's the total length of the roads within two kilometers of the dead bird? And here's where if we just do a selection, we run into trouble because you notice that there are segments of these roads that are both inside and outside of our dead bird buffer. So for example, Marblehead Road extends inside of the buffer, but it also extends outside. So it's selected because part of it is inside, but it's also selected the portion of that road segment that's outside the buffer. If we summed up the lengths of all of these selected features, we would overcount length because we'd get these chunks that are outside. So we don't yet have just roads inside of the buffer. We need to create that, and that's where geoprocessing comes in. So how do we look at just the area where the dead bird buffer and the roads intersect? We can either use an intersect or we can use a clip. They will give us essentially the same results. Um, in an intersect, you get the attributes of both of your input shape files. With a clip, you just get the attributes of the input features, this first one. So let's keep the attributes of roads just in case I need to know lengths of, of different roads later on. And I'm gonna clip those with my dead bird buffer one, and I'm gonna output this as roads clip one. Cleverly named. And then you can't see <laughs> that anything happened. Thanks to GIS's handy mechanism of symbolizing the output in the same manner as the input. Very nice. Good job, GIS. So let's, oops, symbology. Clicking too many times and it's freaking it out. Uh, let's make this red instead and bold and, oops, not cancel. <laughs> apply. So now we see that this roads clip one is just the roads inside of the um, dead bird buffer, which is exactly what we wanted.
And so now we should be able to work on that next question, which is what's the length of all of these things? Because I just created this Rhodes Clip 1 as a new um, file within my default geodatabase, the default in Arc Pro is to append a shape length, in this case, only length because it's roads or it's lines, so you can't calculate area. If this were a polygon, you would have both length and area. So my 416 road segments <laughs> each have a length. Um, that would be helpful. This number would be really helpful if I knew what the units were. So remember that the units, anytime GIS is calculating by default shape length or shape area, these units are gonna be tied to the coordinate system. So let's find out what those units are. This is our source tab and properties. And I look at my spatial reference and I see that this is a mass state plane projection, it's a conic projection, and here the linear units are meters. So that means that these length units are gonna be in meters. And if this were a polygon and I had shape underscore area, then those units would be in square meters. Okay, so that's useful. Um, if I wasn't sure, forgot where that source tab was, or didn't want it to be in square meters, I can always add a field. I can call this length. Let's say I want this to be in miles instead. Save that. I can always go in there and calculate it for myself. Clip one, I want this to be length, and I'm going to tell it, make sure you do this in miles, US miles. And so then we'll get a bunch of segments in miles. Okay, so uh, how do I sum all of these up? I um, would recommend when you have 416, you should not do this by hand or do it in a calculator. Let's use the statistics tool. Um, and if we look at the properties of statistics, there is a handy sum over here. So amazingly, within this two kilometer buffer around the dead bird, there are 48 miles of road um, in that area. It's a, lot of, it's a lot of road to keep paved and to keep driving on. Um, and certainly we could do the same thing if we wanted it in uh, meters instead of, uh, instead of miles. Uh, while we're here, just for fun, let's go back to that summarize tool. So remember the summarize tool was the one that puts together um, everything, uh, all of the street names. So this is gonna be our case field, which says, um, put together all of the things that are the same within that field. And there could be multiples, you know, so you, you could have like, mm, you know, both street and whether it's paved or unpaved kind of thing. So, you know, like North, the paved part of North Street would be a separate row from the unpaved part of North Street. But now we have some quantitative stuff to include in here. So I'm just going to add in my length in miles. And I'm going to tell GIS, every time you have Central Street on here, I see that you've got it a couple of times, sum together the length in miles so that I'm just going to get one row that is uh, Central Street with the sum of all of the miles in it. So I can go down and find my Central Street since that's what we were looking at. So Central Street actually had 22 road segments in here because it was like bisected up by a bunch of different intersections. Um, and so if I had just looked at one of those road segments, I might get a, um, I would get a disproportionately small uh, estimate of how long Central Street is because Central Street actually is two and a half total miles within my dead bird buffer. Um, those summarizing things are really handy tools when you've got long attribute tables with a lot of repeats in them. Um, they're not anything that you're going to need to know for the exam next week, just but you should definitely be feeling pretty comfortable with when to use 
geoprocessing and when to use uh, selections. Thanks.